Welcome to Amazon.com in our lab video series on Cisco ICE 2.0. You can find complete list of ICE video on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to configure TACX on Cisco ICE 2.0. We will go over different components and policies to get the basic TACX authentication going with show authorization. To compare the similarities and differences to ACS 5.x, we are going to use the same scenario that we did back in the ACS 5 videos, SEC 0086, ACS 5.4 TACX device admin on switch and ASA. In fact, we are going to assume that you have some familiarity with ACS 5 as we will keep referring back to ACS throughout this video and the next to help out folks that will be migrating from ACS. For our lab setup, we have our Cisco ICE 2.0 on VLAN 32 with this IP 172.16.32.102. The same VLAN we have our Windows 2012 domain controller, certificate authority server, the IP of .40. The network devices that we're going to be using for our device admin testing here is Switch Switch 1, which is a 3850 switch that's acting as a default gateway for VLAN 32. And directly connected to that also is an ASA firewall. It has an IP of 172.16.10.2. And for the switch, we're just going to use this loopback 172.16.0.10. All right, so those are the two devices we'll be using. For our access scenarios, we have four different users here. Some of them have already been created for the ADs, and some will be created ourselves in this lab for the local user. Just for the AD users, we have admin one, that's part of the AD group, network admin, which will give a shell privilege of 15. Then we have another AD user, support one. This is part of AD group network support, and we will try to deny show access from those user. With the same level of access, I guess the counterpart of admin one is local one, which is a local account that we'll create. that will be part of a local user group of local admin and getting privilege 15 and then local two, which is part of local support local group, will be denied access to shell. So let's jump onto our remote desktops that we have open here, which is our domain controller. And here we have the ICE web interface open. But before we dive into the configuration on ICE, since we have uh, two users that reside on AD, let me show you those two users, which is admin one and support one. Here under the lab minutes OU, admin one is a member of network admin and support one is a member of network support. All right, so the first thing we need to make sure here since we are leveraging AD as our user database is the connection between ICE and AD and that's under external identity store or sources rather. And here under active directory scope lab minutes that we have already created with the domain labminutes.com active directory domain currently our status is operational so we should be ready to go so while we're here we're just going to go ahead and add our ad user group we already have some from our base configuration but not the two groups that we need which is admin or network admin and network support so let's click add and select from directory and we're going to search for a word network since both of the groups contain the string network in there and there you go we got network admin and network support All right we're going to later on use that as part of our authorization condition and one of the things you want to make sure that you have acquired prior to configuring the TACX is the license the box has to be properly licensed with the device admin. If you go under the system and licensing, you will see that there is a requirement as far as the license for device admin. And unless you have properly installed the license or running the email like we were doing here, you may not actually be seeing the device administration menu right here under the work centers. Right, so this column right here will basically be blank and you will not be able to configure anything that's related to the device admin. Right, so here we have a device admin license enable. And it's a one-time license. If you're upgrading from the previous 1.x version, then you need to make sure that you purchase those license from your reseller and install it here. Right, unlike ACS, 
there is also, that's also has a large license if you exceed 500 devices on ICE. It's just a single license that you need and it will support as many devices as you need. Right. Once you have the license installed, you also need to make sure that you have device admin service enabled on your policy service node. So let's go under the system deployment. Pick your policy service node and there's a checkbox here for enabling device admin service. And click save. All right, what we're going to do next is to configure a dandy source sequence. Since our user database is going to be both on AD as well as the local, we just want to limit identity source to be just those two types. And we're going to do that through the identity source sequences. And I believe we have one already for AD and local only. We have one for AD and we have one that has cert AD, local, and guess. So we're going to create a new one called LM AD local description. Say check AD, then local database. Okay, then down here we add, I guess there's the different choices that you can pick, whether it's at the domain level, all join point, or scope level. You're just going to do the scope level in terms of the AD and internal user. Click submit. Right, so now that we have configured the user database or with any source sequences, we can go through the work center for device admin workflow. Starting off with the overview, you might want to spend a little bit of time kind of read through this just to understand what you need to configure it, or you can also just follow along the menu that's show on top here from left to right. I believe that worked as well. And that's what we're going to do. Starting off with the identity menu where we need to create a local user. In this case, we have two local user, local one and two. If you do not plan to use the local user database, you can just go ahead and skip that. Since we do, we're going to create a local user one with the login password. Usually I do all Cisco, but here I want to test, change the password on next login. So I'm going to make it Cisco one, two, three. But for enable, I'm just going to do regular Cisco, right? Just to do a quick test to force user to change password at this login. Let's check that checkbox. And currently we don't have any user group created, so we're going to leave it blank. We'll create one more for a local two. Here, we're just going to do password Cisco all the way through. Okay, submit. Next menu over is user identity group. And here we can create identity group for our user. Make sure you pick the user and not the endpoint. We'll click add. Our first local group is called local admin. Put description if you like, just say group local admin. Submit, click back in. And then we want to add local one user to that. Add user, pick local one, and then it's automatically added and save. The next local group is local support group local support. Click back in and then we'll add local two this time. Okay, guess we should go back and always double check and make sure it's successfully added, which it did. All right, so now we're done with that menu, moving on to network resources with network devices. Here we're dealing with switch one and firewall one and both of those devices have already been added to ICE, but only for radius. So now we're gonna get under LM switch one. And all we need to do is to add TACX secret key. We'll keep it simple, Cisco, show Cisco. And if you want to enable single connection mode, you can do so right here. We're just gonna skip and go back and do the same for firewall one. Cisco, make sure it looks correct and save. 
right? So if you have a lot of devices, uh, you can use the import export function to make bulk changes, and that might help you out, especially if you already have a large deployment of 802.1x with the radius. And all you need to do is just uh, updating the tagging session so you can do that. I believe it will come out as a CSV format, and you should be able to just add a column, if not there already, for tagx. Right, the default device is for any devices that do not match your network device list. And before there was only the radius section and now we have a TACX section. Okay, so if you want to use that, then make sure you enable that feature. Now for TACX external servers and TACX server sequences, those are for if you want ICE to act as a TACX proxy where TACX requests are received and then forwarded to another external TACX server. This is very similar to what ACS is capable of. If you're currently using that proxy function, then you would need to configure their session accordingly. All right, we're not gonna do that here, so we're gonna skip. Now for network device groups, if your devices are not in the group already, you can do it right here. I think for the device types, they already are. So we have a switch, VPN firewall, and wireline controller created. Let's go ahead and create a new location. So click our location. And maybe just call it HQ. For headquarter, click on that. And here we can add all of our network devices to it. Right, completely optional, but just want to show you can do it right here as part of the configuration flow. Next is the policy condition. If you want to create like a library of conditions that you want to reuse at multiple uh, locations of the policies, and this is very similar to what you can do with Radius, then you can create them. Actually, it's I believe it's sharing the same library uh, table as the Radius. So whatever you created here, it will basically show up if you were to do the uh, configure the radius as well. So make sure you name them properly so you can tell them apart. All right, try not to mix them up if you can. So there's a section for authentication and there's also a section for authorizations. And I would say this is completely optional. Right, so we're not gonna do that and skip ahead to the policy results. So for policy results here is only listed for what's related to TACX. This is different from if you were to go under the policy menu and then policy element result because that's for radius. So in order to access this uh, submenu, this is the only place you can come in and access it. There's one for command Z and one for um, show profile. We're gonna skip the command authorization for now. So we're gonna leave that unconfigured and skip ahead to TACX profile. And the only profile we really need to create right now is the one that allows privilege 15. By default, there's one called default show profile. And if you look under there, I don't think there's anything configured. It's just an empty profile, as you can see here. So by returning this, just basically returning the authorization success without any type of attributes being returned. Okay, so now we are going to create our own. Click add. We're gonna call this one Priv 15 for Priv 15, and we also want to do max 15 here. So under the task attribute views, there's a common task, which is are the common attributes that most people use when configuring TACX, things like default privilege, which we'll um, select for uh, select 15 here. So it goes between zero and 15. The max privilege, do the same. So the user would not be able to exceed that, but here, we're selecting 15. And then there are things like ACL, auto command, timeout, idle time, which I think pretty much looks very similar to what you might have had on the ACS. And then at the bottom, if you want to push down a custom attribute that's not listed here in the common task, then you can do so by adding it. But you need to know the exact attribute names and the values. All right. So a good example is when you configure TACX with wise line controller. And I believe that's being governed by a row attribute. So you need to know the correct formats and string of the values to send to the device, right? And then the next tab over is the raw value. So whatever you configure on this page, you can view it as a raw value attribute. And that's what I is gonna be 
returning to the network devices. Right, so here we have our perf level 15 and max perf level 15. Then click Submit. So we say so far with the shell profile, it looks very similar to what we used to have with ACS. Now that we have that configured, we can move along to the policy set. All right, just a quick note here, this policy set is dedicated to device admin only and completely separate from the radius policy set. Right, as you go to the policy set for radius, you see that currently we have quite a number of policy set configured already. And none of those shows up when you go under the admin device or device admin policy set. All right, so by default, there is one default policy set that you can use if you don't plan to build like a complex hierarchy of uh, authorization policy, then you can just go ahead and use the default policy set. Otherwise, you can create your own policy set, which you would do here just to demonstrate that. So click this add icon and then create policy set. Then you can change the name. We'll just call it LM device admin. Condition, although it's not really necessary in our case. Since we're just going to use a single policy set for everything. And unlike ACS, where the service policy are being shared between the radius and TACX. So for device admin, you should have to specify the protocol to be TACX. You don't really have to do it here because the system kind of sort the radius and TACX requests for you automatically and drop them into the correct policy set. Here, I'm just going to show you that we are going to match by protocol TACX although completely unnecessary, but you still have other options if you would like to match uh, things like the actual uh, TACX attributes itself, that's the ICE received from the network device, right? or the device type or uh, device group. Then you have this little section at the top that's related to the TACX proxy function. If you want to just have the ICE relaying the TACX request, then you will select the corresponding proxy server sequence right here. Then you get under the authentication policy, there's one default rule that is using the allow protocol default device admin. And I guess we can go under there. I guess it should be under the result just to see what's defined as the default device admin. Um, that should be under result, allow protocol right here, default device admin. And by default, it is allowing PAPCHAP and MSCHAP v1. Okay, so that should be good enough for what we're doing. And then for the user database, right now it's selecting all user ID, but we know that we only want to use AD and local. So we select the sequence that we created earlier, LM AD local. All right now we get to the authorization policy section. We are going to create two policies here, one for a network admin, the other one for local admin, and assign them privilege level 15. While we're gonna let the other two user groups kind of fall all the way down to the default deny uh, rule right here. So insert rule above, call this one network admin. Condition is based on AD group membership. Okay, external group. And we need the network admin right there. We're not going to uh, assign any command set right now, but select a show profile of per 15 max 15. Right. Then we need to create another one for the local admin. So we're going to duplicate below. Local admin. We're not going to use the 80 group, so we'll delete it. But instead select the local user group. User identity group, local admin, and then same pre 15 max 15. Right, then you have the default authorization rule. Just to make a quick note here is that show profile is being left blank by default. And 
You can see I'm trying to click on it. If this were an ACS, you would have been able to select deny access option, but that option doesn't seem to be available on ICE currently. All right, so the best you can do right now is to leave it blank because it doesn't make sense for you to pick default show profile or pre 15 max 15, right? Because both of those will return authorization um, success per se. So I'm going to leave it out for now and leave the command set to deny all commands as well. Click Submit. And we're going to skip the report section for now because that would be after the fact that we've gone through the authentication testing. And the last option here is Settings. Some of the things you can change here is the timeout values, maximum packet size, or the username password prompts if you want to change it to something rather than the regular username password, whether or not to support the single connect, a password change control if you want to allow user to be able to change password, and session key assignment. So we're not going to change anything here, we'll leave it at default. All right, for the most part, again, looks very similar to what you can do on ACS. So now that we have the basic configuration in place, we can go ahead and continue with the AAA configuration on network devices.